Hello, my name is Aidan and welcome to another Golf Predictor video tutorial. In this video, I shall be talking about one of the most useful pages for spotting golfers for an upcoming tournament, and that's the field ranking form page. So to get started, we'll go to the form menu and we'll select the field ranking form option from that menu. And if you do that, you'll be brought to the following page, which as usual, I've preloaded on a separate tab. Like other pages, this page allows you to rank the field by certain important metrics. But unlike other pages, as you can see here, you can also see up to 10 of the previous uh, tournaments that contribute to the metric. So for example, for the default metric, which is the GP season average finishing position, we can see that the field is ranked in order of those with the lowest uh, average. So no surprise there to see Jordan Spieth. Uh, near the top of the rankings, despite his poor finish uh, last week uh, at the Barclays. As you can see there, if you hover over any of the tournament results from T1 to T10, you get more information about the tournament. So you can see there that uh, in week 34 and 2015, of the, that was the Barclays, the first uh, FedEx Cup playoff event, uh, he missed the cut and he finished on plus 7. So the, the table is color coded. So blue means uh, blue background means you miss the cut. So you can see at a glance, uh, top tens, wins, and miss cuts, and so on. Also, you can see uh, charts on the top of each of the metrics uh, that you select. So, for example, you can see who's the best uh, in the season so far. And again, you see the same three at the top. They're Justin Jordan Spieth, uh, Stenson, and Jor and uh, Jason Day. Closing that again, you see the same three guys are at the top in the uh, data table. Now you can sort this data table by the field rank or the overall GP rank. Uh, so for example, uh, looking at it this way, you can see the field sorted by who's best in the metric that you've chosen in the drop down list. But if you wanted to see the golfer sorted by the same list you see in the main prediction rankings page, you can click uh, this overall rank uh, column. And after a bit of processing, you can see now that the um, golfers have been sorted by the GP rank, which gives you the same order as the main uh, prediction page. So this gives you an easy way of spotting uh, the golfer's form in the, in the different metrics by A, selecting the metric of interest from the drop-down list, and then B, looking at the turn, last 10 tournaments the golfer has played in that metric to see uh, how exactly they got on and to make a judgment call on whether they would be a great pick or not for the upcoming tournament which is the Deutsche Bank Championship. Okay so for example if we just sort the table back again by the field rankings we can see uh, if you hover over the golfer name as usual get more information so basically gives you a breakdown of these 10 tournaments here and it tells you that Jordan Spieth has won twice, five of the top tens and missed the cut uh, twice in his last ten tournaments that contributed to this season average. Now note that the season, depending on the time of year, may or may not have played more than ten tournaments. So now we're deep into the season, we're on uh, week, uh, week um, 35. So we can only show up to 10 tournaments. So the golfer's season average, and which is what the metric that the golfer is sorted by, is in this column here, attached um, under the MAV. And if you go down to the bottom, you see a key for the table. So it's the average finishing position for the metric. So that's his value for the entire season. However, this uh, T average or tournament average is the last 10 tournaments. So it's basically the average of these 10 values here. And this standard deviation is the standard deviation uh, from the average for these 10 tournaments. So you can see that his overall season average, for, uh, that's Jordan Speed, is 20.86. And his total in the last, uh, his average in the last 10 tournaments is 25. So you can see that he's not playing quite so well in the last 10 tournaments as he has been in the season as a whole. So looking down the list there, you can see that nearly all the top golfers have had at least one blowout or one uh, fairly bad finish in the 70s, 80s or above. Uh, so you, you have to go right down as far as uh, Robert Streb down in 19th. And he, if you notice here, he's got this lowest average, 17.1, from his last 10 events. And he's the only golfer there on that page who, who hasn't had a really bad performance. His worst result is 42nd. In the last 10 events. So that gives him the lowest average of any golfer there in the first page. 
Now, as I said before, there are a number of metrics you can choose from this drop down list. There are 13 in all, and you can see them by clicking on this uh, arrow here. Unfortunately, as I mentioned in other tutorials, the limitations of the screen recording software does not allow you to see these on this tutorial, so I just have to take my word for it. There are six uh, metrics related to the finishing position. They are the season average that you can see there, last five events average, same course, same tournament, last 12 similar events, and similar length course average. And then you have seven other metrics which are related to rounds, such as their first round average in the current season, their second round, and so on and so forth. So there are 13 options you can choose there. So we'll look at another one or two now just to prove that they do exist. So I will choose the second option, which is the last five events average. So we select that one and the page will reload. And you can see now that you can only see the last five tournaments for each of the golfers because that's what we've chosen here in the uh, drop down list. So you can see that the metric the, uh, for the season uh, uh, will be the same as the tournament as the last 10 tournament average because we only have five tournaments in each case. So we can see there that Jason Day is really on fire. He's won three out of the last. Uh, five tournaments he's played. He finished tied fourth in the uh, Open Championship before that, and he had a blowout for him, which was 12th, tied 12th at uh, the Bridgestone Invitational. So you can see that his average of 3.8 from his last five tournaments is really, really good, and it makes uh, just Jordan, uh, Justin Rose's all, uh, very good performance look uh, fairly pedestrian in comparison. So you can see there that uh, Justin had uh, four top sixes in his previous five events, and his only relatively bad one was a, a, tight six, a tight 16th place last week at the Barclays. So you can see here that if you're interested in how uh, golfers in the field have been playing recently in the last five events, you can come to this page. You can, um, you can either sort the, the, the results by the... Uh, field rank for the last five average or you can then as I showed you already you can uh, press this column here and see, it in the, see the golfers in the same order as in the main predictions page and then you can peruse these results by hovering over to see what tournament they, they pertain to so it really gives you a view uh, at a glance because of the color coding you can see yellows are good red are very good blues are bad so you can see at a glance for the entire um, 25 or so golfers on, on a single page, you can see who's been performing well or badly in their previous uh, five events. And because we're ranking the field by the last five events, you can expect a lot of yellows and reds in the first page because by definition the best golfers will have the best field rankings for this metric. Okay, so we'll just look perhaps at one of the uh, round metrics. So we'll just say uh, look at uh, the first round average uh, in the GP season. We select that one. Page will reload. So say you're interested in picking a golfer to lead after round one. You can use this page to possibly make a, a decision on that. So you can see there that uh, Will Wilcox has got a, a very good average in his first rounds uh, this season and in even better one in the last 10 events. So you can see he's been averaging about 68 in his last 10 events for his first round. And the season average for the first round is a very healthy 69, uh, 68.69. So again, if you hover over um, any of the tournament round scores there, you can see more information, such as the uh, tournament he's shot that particular score in. So you see blanks could mean it's a match play, or in this case, it's a stable for tournament, in which case we don't have round scores. So you see there you can uh, check the... Uh, performance of the field in the first round at a glance by going uh, to this page and selecting the round metric of choice from the list. So we'll just go back to the uh, default choice by clicking on the season average. So you can see that uh, if you want to see with the golfers who have the best performance in uh, any of the 13 metrics available, you can get a list of their 10 most recent results and this will really help you making good decisions for your fancy golf, your DFS golf or your betting needs. I should note at this stage that only subscribers can see the entire field on this page. If you are not subscribed, you will be able to see all those golfers ranked 11 to 25 in the particular metric 
and that's as long as they're also ranked between 11 and 25 in the overall ranking. So I would really advise you to think about subscribing to Golf Predator because this page is really, really useful in helping you see which golfers are bubbling up and would make great choices for the upcoming event. Before I finish, we'll just take a quick look at the uh, course average. So we'll select that from the drop down list. The page will reload. And you can see who's the, who has the best average on the same course. You can see that Louis Westhazen um, has got the best average, but he has uh, only played uh, on the course once, hence he came second, hence the good ranking. Now if you look down here for number four, where John Sengen has got a long history of playing the course, and if you hover over the, uh, the oldest tournament, you can see it's from 2004. So as you may know that the Golf Predictor uh, course and tournament metrics and the similar event metrics only go back to the previous five seasons. So although this page shows up to 10 results, then only results from the previous five seasons will contribute towards the average you see in the metric average column. So any uh, results that fall outside the time the time limit will be in grey text and those that are do contribute to the average are in black. So you can see there that in the 2010 uh, it's been black because 2010 would be the first season that would be looked at because if 2010, 11, 12, 13 and 14 they make up the five previous seasons. So any results before that, such as 2009, 2008, and all the way back to 2004, they uh, are, gray, are in grey text, as you can see there, because they do not contribute to the overall metric average, but they do contribute to the uh, last 10 tournament average that you see there. So just be aware that tournaments and uh, results that fall outside the remit of the golf predictor uh, engine, so they're older than five seasons, are in uh, grey text. Okay, that's about it for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful and thanks for watching.